The Lady of Elche, a limestone bust that was first discovered in 1897. It was found at an archaeological site on a private estate, two kilometers south of Elche within Spain, currently exhibited at the National Archaeological Museum in Madrid. The artistic influences involved in creating her are a heavily debated topic, this undoubtedly due to her unusual appearance and the fact that no one seems to be able to pinpoint her origins. According to the Encyclopedia of Religion, the Lady of Elche is believed to have a direct association with Tanit, the goddess of Carthage, who was once worshipped by the Punic Iberians. Though at best, this could be perceived as a guess based on vague similarity. Clearly, the most striking and intriguing detail surrounding the Lady of Elche is her mysterious and possibly advanced technological appendages. Positioned around her head and flowing down the bust, the original function for these strange decorations is unknown. The current academically accepted view is that the originally polychromed bust is thought to have represented a woman wearing a complex headdress. While some scholars suggest that the sculpture is Iberian and associated with Tanit, the goddess of Carthage, others have proposed the work reflects a long-lost Atlantean goddess. The unusual features of the sculpture, such as the quietly kept detail that she had an elongated head, has led many independent researchers to suspect the spools were not part of a unique headdress, but was a type of lost technology reflecting the highly advanced nature of the lost and forgotten Atlantean civilization. Art historian John F. Moffat, along with most of academia, agree that the shape of the lady's eyes, nose, and other features were too delicate to have been carved in pre-Christian Spain. Therefore, predictably, instead of suspecting that an unknown, highly advanced civilization could have possibly created it, Many academics have simply concluded it to be an elaborate hoax, regardless of the compelling evidence upon the statue which displays its true antiquity, and also of the fact that in 1997, the mayor of Elche fought to have the bust of the Lady of Elche returned from the National Archaeological Museum of Spain in Madrid to the city of Elche, to be on display during celebrations of the city's 2000th year. It was to be a special exhibit but the petition to have the bust returned was denied. The director of Elche's archaeological museum, Rafael Ramos, argued that it was preposterous to say that the statue could not survive the journey, noting that more delicate pieces are transported around the world regularly. Do these sound like the actions of a group of people who suspect the artifact to be a fake? Or does it sound more like the actions of a group of conspiring individuals with an aim of retaining a valuable, yet largely unknown relic. Is the statue of the Lady of Elche a long-lost Atlantean bust? Or maybe a leader of a group of beings whom once visited Earth? Questions surrounding the Lady of Elche largely remain unanswered. How did she end up in a farmer's field in Spain? The disputes and specialist theories surrounding the Lady of Elche clearly illustrate the secret importance of the bust. Just who was the Lady of Elche? An ancient queen? Perhaps an ancient alien? When a piece is clearly treasured by the same group who contest it as a fake, we always find such objects highly compelling. Quote, Here we have some kind of animal. It looks like a dinosaur. When Professor Petoni found this statue, it was reportedly making a strange noise. So, upon further investigation, which involved a circular incision into the statue's stone, it was found to contain a small black ball. You can see this mysterious object resting within the opening. After further research surrounding this artifact, the professor informed me that somehow somebody must have performed a practical joke on them. When asked why, he replied, because the result of the research shows that this metal material is in fact, amazingly, chrome steel. However, as far as modern man is aware, chrome steel was only discovered for the first time during the beginning of the 20th century within Austria. That means it should have been impossible to have found some inside a statue with an astonishing estimated age of approximately 17,000 years. 
Professor Petoni was laughing in disbelief. He said, if a statue is making a strange sound, I do not open it right away. I also first performed several x-rays prior to his research. And clearly, within this still complete closed statue, is this unexplainable round chrome ball. Proof the sphere was in existence before more detailed exploration was undertaken. End quote. That was an excerpt from one of Klaus Dona's many press interviews, specifically pertaining to one of the many seemingly impossible ancient out-of-place artifacts he so often covers within his work. Intriguingly, along with this detailed description of unfolding events surrounding their research of this unquestionably perplexing item, Professor Petoni side-noted that during his examinations of the object's outer shell, he also noticed that at some time within its long life, undoubtedly within antiquity, it had previously been expertly opened, presumably during a similar operation. Then, at some later date, and for some currently unknown reason, almost perfectly resealed. Was this task undertaken by a later advanced civilization? A group of individuals who also uncovered this artifact's inexplicable features. Possibly a lost civilization's ancient museum exhibit? Could it possibly be far older than the 17,000-year aging it is currently assigned with? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. In 1990, an Italian geologist named Angelo Pitoni would find an unusual stone while visiting Sierra Leone, a mysterious artifact that has baffled all who have studied it. A local Fuller chief was said to have given it to Pitoni, a blue stone with mysterious white lines upon its surface. After returning to Europe, Pitoni took the stone to the Institute of Natural Sciences of Geneva and then University La Sapienza in Rome for further analysis. To his surprise, tests revealed that it was not a turquoise, or indeed anything that could officially be identified. Furthermore, the blue stone didn't correspond to any known mineral. But the most intriguing thing is its color. Researchers still do not understand how the stone has acquired or retained its color. This even though several universities and laboratories have analyzed the artifact at great length. It seems its color remains a mystery. Mysteriously, at the University of Utrecht, the stone underwent several tests with use of strong acids, but none of the acids could affect the stone. It was even heated to over 3000 degrees Celsius, yet its composition wasn't altered. When a small piece of the stone was pulverized and viewed under the microscope, it curiously lost its color. Now known as the Sky Stone, according to analysis, an amazing 77.17% of the stone is somehow made of pure oxygen. The remaining percentage was divided between carbon, calcium and another unknown element. When researchers crushed a piece of the sky rock and mixed it with acetone, hexane and methylene, and then enhanced the extractions with ultrasound, they were eventually able to locate an organic compound that is currently unknown to science. Dated at 55,000 years old, just what is the Sky Stone? How could it possibly be made mostly of oxygen? Is this stone a past remnant left by a once advanced civilization? Or maybe its origins are not even local to Earth. Amazingly, it seems that Pitoni's sky stone is not unique. There has in fact been similar finds in other places of the Earth, most notably Brazil. The other sample of sky stone was submitted to GRS Swiss Labs for testing and analysis by an anonymous dealer. Intrigued, American artist and designer Jared Collins tried to buy the small cutaway piece from the dealer so he could study it further but the dealer refused to sell it. He wouldn't even name a price for the larger full stone. It seems there are indeed other exhibits of this curious stone made mostly of pure oxygen in existence, yet the mystery surrounding their makeup and origin persists to this day. Hey guys, so today I wanted to share with you a rather special out of place artifact. It's known as the Fisher Canyon footprint, and it's actually a lump of coal. However, this small lump of coal is something very special. It's an artifact we hold dear to our hearts here at Mystery History. 
Since its discovery in the early 1900s by a man named John T. Reed, a character we have actually covered in the past, it has been silencing skeptics and evolutionists the world over. John T. Reed was the man responsible for confirming native Indian legends of a race of red-headed giants that once terrorized the American continent some 13,000 years ago. When John found the Fisher Canyon footprint, he reported it to the New York Sunday American. The coal layer in which the fossil was found was dated at over 15 million years ago. Microscopic photography that was carried out by the Rockefeller Institute, presumably attempting to discredit the find, actually confirmed that it was indeed a heel print of a hand-stitched shoe, and that the fossil seemed to show the presence of two rows of stitches along the edge of the sole, with twists of thread clearly visible in the photography. The right side of the shoe also appeared more worn than the left, indicating that it was worn on the right foot. Crystals of mercury sulfide, collected during the analysis, only confirmed the fossilized shoe print's enormous age. After the test results were in, Samuel Hubbard of the Museum of Archaeology in Oakland, California, buckled to the sheer amount of conclusive evidence by telling the press, quote, Today's people are not yet able to make this kind of shoe. Facing this kind of evidence indicates that at the time of suspected uncivilized arthropods, millions of years ago people with high intelligence appear to have existed. Detail of the threads proves that it was the sole of a shoe and was strictly the handiwork of man." End quote. This is why we love the Fisher Canyon footprint so much. It sat in the back of museum collections for years, silently waiting for evolutionists and skeptics alike to stumble upon its existence only for it to then cast its spell of tremendous doubt upon their way of thinking. They can produce no real explanation for it. The best any mainstream scientists or anthropologists can do is ignore the evidence and conclude it's just a natural formation. Unfortunately, the footprint conveniently went missing a few years ago, even though by all accounts it was just a lump of coal. The story has also been hijacked over the years, with the Rockefeller Institute's test results subsequently vanishing. However, luckily for us, the quotes by Hubbard are in press archives all over the world. This small lump of coal is sure to fuel the argument for years to come. Hey guys, so in 1999, engineer and all-around good guy, John J. Williams found something that has become a very important find, known as the Enigmalif. He was hiking in North America when he noticed something odd about a boulder lying on the ground. Upon closer inspection, John discovered that the rock appeared to have three metal prongs protruding from its center. Finding this rather odd like anyone would, John collected the rock up and took it home. Now, it must be said, John J. Williams is one of those endearing characters that is not easily fooled. Knowing as the perceptive person that he is that an authentic, out-of-place artifact that according to modern understanding shouldn't exist are the types of relics that regularly go missing, with many people attempting to get their hands on it. John has guarded this artifact so well, in fact, he even refuses to give away the location in which he found it. Thanks to John's protective nature, the Enigmalith, also known as the Petrodox, is still in the public arena. A device that has the undeniable aspect of an electrical component, which ended up embedded into solid granite, stone composed of quartz and feldspar with small traces of mica. Williams has received offers up to half a million dollars for the device, but he refuses to sell it. Williams stated that the artifact, however, is available to any researchers for analysis. So far, only a few individuals have taken the time, or the risk to their funding, to study the mysterious object. According to these studies, the Petrodox is not an accretion, concretion, pumice, or a fossil. It does not contain any known resins, cement, glues, adhesives, limestone, mortar, or other binding agents. In other words, this baby is an authentic bona fide rock, which a long time ago formed around the electrical component. According to geological analysis, researchers believe that the rock is at least 100,000 years old, which should be impossible when the object embedded in it is of artificial origin. The device has been compared by some researchers to an electronic XLR connector or similar component. The artifact has a very weak magnetic attraction. Readings indicate either an open circuit or very high impedance between the pins. Williams has not allowed the object to be broken in half for analysis, but x-ray tests have shown that the artifact has a mysterious, quote, opaque internal structure in the center of the stone. 
Skeptics firmly state, but at a distance, that this 100,000-year-old electrical component is a manufactured hoax. But Williams does not agree and welcomes studies of it. Williams is convinced that he has found a genuine artifact that belonged to an advanced ancient civilization or an extraterrestrial race. He is willing to let researchers authenticate the artifact under certain conditions, that he is present during the analysis, and that the rock remains unharmed. Thanks to his diligence, this is a rare out-of-place artifact, which is still in the realm of public scrutiny. As always, thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. In the Museum of the Unexplained in Reed Spring, Missouri, a rather peculiar artifact can be found. Known as the Bob White Artifact, Bob was driving with a friend down a Colorado highway one night in 1985, when they would both experience a close encounter. As the craft flew over Bob's head, according to Bob, it dropped him a gift, an object which has caused Bob numerous issues. Quote, I don't know about you, but as for me, every time I hear people from Skeptic Magazine lying through their teeth, it makes me sick. They say they have never seen any hard evidence of UFOs. This is only true because they refuse to look at this, a piece of a UFO. So the next time you see the Skeptic Magazine people on Larry King or some other TV program saying there is no physical evidence, you will know they are lying. I have challenged them to debate me, but they are afraid. So, Skeptic Magazine, you have been exposed for the fraud that you are. That was a statement made by Bob White in the late 90s. He further claimed that in 1996, he was flown to the classified Los Alamos National Laboratory for a detailed analysis of his evidence. White was told by senior staff that the object he recovered was indeed of extraterrestrial origin also confessing to have successfully collected another object similar to his before. Although the officials fervently denied these claims, in 2000, Bob managed to acquire U.S. Army documents dating from the 1940s titled UFOs in Denmark. In it were multiple images of an object nearly identical to the one he had. When Dr. Rudolf Olson of Carolina examined the artifact, he concluded, quote, to describe the Bob White object in the simplest possible way, I think you can say it is an agglomeration of rapidly cooled droplets or particles of an aluminum silicon alloy. With such an unusual structure, I can only speculate on how it was formed. It turns out that this artifact was free-formed, or more precisely, it was somehow cast in a zero-g environment without the use of a mold. It has been to over 15 labs and universities over the past 21 years, including Los Alamos, Sally, New Mexico, etc. If the artifact had been on a machine or a grinder of some sort, there would inevitably have been forensic evidence left upon the artifact. All we know is that it was in a molten state when ejected into a vacuum under extreme pressure within extremely cold conditions. Although Bob White's artifact rarely gains any attention anymore, it is clearly a most compelling piece of evidence in support of the possibility of alien visitation. In a small place once known as Mineral County, in West Virginia rests a very special rock. Known as Waffle Rock, it is a huge piece of something very ancient, lodged in the ground where it must have been struck many thousands of years earlier. No longer visible to the public, due to it being several meters below the water level of a dam built in the area, which forced the residents of Mineral County away forever. After a petition by many of the locals, two pieces of waffle rock were thankfully preserved for future study. One stayed relatively local to the area, while the other is preserved within the Smithsonian Institute. Dr. Jack B. Epstein of the U.S. Geological Survey said, quote, Four sets of joints are apparent in the waffle rock. Just what could have made Waffle Rock clearly remains a mystery, and any hypothesis that links it to possibly having been part of a larger artificial craft quickly shouted down as absurd. The truth is, no one really knows what Waffle Rock is, but such hostility directed towards any extraterrestrial possibilities is something we always find interesting. Waffle Rock appears to have a metallic gritting which runs through some of its form. Interestingly, a case we cover in another video regarding another less mentioned find of a very similar, strange suspected rock formation was found nearby. 
Were these fragments once pieces of an ancient spacecraft? We find it highly suspicious that the powers that be chose to submerge such a curious thing, subsequently hiding it from the world. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.